What if Deku married Lady Nagant? It's a wild idea that has sparked the imagination of many fans. Imagine the power couple they would make, with Deku's unwavering determination and Lady Nagant's sharpshooting skills. Their wedding would surely be a sight to behold, with heroes and villains alike in attendance. But what would their life together look like? Would Deku be able to handle Lady Nagant's mysterious past? And could Lady Nagant find happiness and redemption in the arms of the symbol of peace? One thing's for sure. Their love story would be unlike any other in the world of My Hero Academia. So, what do you think? Would you ship Deku and Lady Nagant? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more My Hero Academia content. Izuku Midoriya always wanted to be a hero, ever since he first could see, hear, talk, and understand, he always latched onto the idea of becoming a hero, someone that protects people and fights off evil. And it all started when he first saw All Might's debut video, where he single-handedly saved hundreds of people in his city. He was inspired, and like any child would, immediately idolized All Might. But who wouldn't? The tall and immensely muscular man is this generation's symbol of peace after all, the number one hero. That wasn't the Izuku Midoriya of this timeline. The Izuku Midoriya of this timeline is essentially the same with many differences. He didn't have much interest in being a hero unlike his original self. Though he was later influenced to be won by his best friend Katsuki Bakugu and many more people. The Izuku in this timeline isn't quirkless, which resulted in a different path. Not one where he shoulders the burden of one for all, personally given by All Might himself. This is the path where fate was a little bit playful and decided to give him the most ridiculous quirk in the world. Inko Midoriya always knew that her child would be special, not in the same way as other parents usually think of themselves, but in a way like a special person, or better yet a god whispered to her specifically. She only needed one look at her newborn baby to realize that this child will make the world shake one day. And she never would doubt if it was in a literal way. Hisa Hisashi Midoriya sighed with a fond look on his face as he looked at his boy. The baby looked so small and fragile to him, and he was sure that he could probably break Izuku if he wasn't careful of a fact that made him worry. Hisashi promised that he would keep Izuku safe from any harm, at least until he was sure that his boy could handle himself on his own just fine. He felt a bit agitated over the fact that he doesn't have much time to spend here in his home country, but then again he still has to keep up with his job back in America. Hun, you're muttering. Inko sighed as she looked at her husband who was currently making a puddle on the floor from the sheer amount of sweat he had made. Hisashi quickly snapped out of his thoughts before he looked at his wife. Oh, right, sorry. Hisashi nodded, his expression turning embarrassed while he absentmindedly wiped off some sweat from his snout. Inko just looked amused over her husband's antics. She always found his unintentional mutterings pretty cute ever since they first met in high school. Look, I know that you only have three years here before you have to go back to America, but really it's fine, you can always call us whenever you want. Inko placed her free hand on top of Hisashi's own hand before she gently squeezed. Hisashi couldn't help but smile, he always loved the feeling of Inko's hand, even if his own hand is five times bigger than hers. Still, I want to be here, with you too. I don't want to have Azuku growing up and only seeing his old man behind a screen. Hisashi looked at the baby with concern. I don't want to miss out on stuff in his life you know? He huffed. Inko looked at her husband for a bit before looking at Azuku. Well, you do have a month of vacation every year, right? You can always visit back here during your vacation, and we can always send daily pictures of Azuku so you can see how much he's growing up. She offered. Hisashi changed his focus from Azuku to Inko as he blinked. Yeah, that could work, weekly calls, and a video call every month? He added while watching a smile form on Inko's face. Yeah, that works. She agreed before they both heard Izuku coo, telling the two that he woke up from their chatting. Oh banana biscuits. Hisashi moved back, fully expecting that Izuku would not react well to his appearance. Everyone did fear him for a reason after all. 
An eight feet tall, immensely muscular humanoid dragon who can easily hold up an entire building if he has to and generate fire that Endeavor would be jealous of. Stop overreacting, Ashi. Inko gave her husband a flat stare before smiling at Izuku who immediately focused on her. Izuku, despite being a newborn baby, immediately identified Inko as his mother, so he began to coo, babble, and giggle happily. Seriously, he won't burst out crying like you do over spoiled milk. Inko sighed, giving Izuku a smile before she gently moved him around to let him see Hisashi. Father and son looked at each other for a bit, the former with fear and hesitation, the latter with curiosity and confusion. Aya, uh, you sure? Hisashi looked at Inko, his hands doing weird gestures on their own to show his fear and hesitance. Inko rolled her eyes, yes, honey, Izuku won't fear you. She nodded before sending Hisashi an encouraging expression. Inko's smile is enough to fuel Hisashi to take down the top ten heroes in a minute. Hisashi looked at Izuku before he slowly and carefully moved closer. Hey, ah, uh, little guy. Hisashi went a bit closer. I'm your, dad? He hesitantly offered his hand to Izuku. The baby looked at the massive humanoid dragon before looking at the large hand. In Izuku's perspective, he can only see a colossal titan looking at him. Hisashi's breath hitched, feeling Izuku's small hand, his tiny fingers touching his own. Do wa? Hisashi dumbly breathed out, just the touch of his boy made his worries disappear. Inko looked at the two with amusement. Think you can actually hold our boy for a bit without fainting, hun? Inko asked. Hisashi looked at Inko for a moment before he nodded, letting Inko gently put Izuku on Hisashi's hands. It took Hisashi everything to not burst out into a crying fit as soon as he felt Izuku. He's so small, yet Hisashi can't help but feel like the baby would become a titan soon. He's the size of my thumb. Hisashi looked at his son, who he can easily carry with a single hand. Inko snorted. Of course he is, you're a massive dragon, you know? Inko commented before she focused her gaze from her husband to her son. He inherited your face, dear. Hisashi mumbled. Inko just chuckled at her husband's words. Well, he did inherit your black hair too, she nodded and watched Hisashi look at the small patches of black hair on Izuku's head. You and our boy share the same eyes. The man added. I really thought he'd be leaning more to your appearance, turns out it would be on both of us. I can tell our little boy will become popular with girls soon. Hisashi chuckled before he paused and felt a small, very small hand touch his snout. He blinked before looking a bit down to see Izuku holding his snout. He didn't even realize that he was unintentionally leaning closer to Izuku. Inko watched Hisashi practically turn into a statue which made her eyes roll from her husband's, intense reactions to any events. See Hisashi? Our baby doesn't fear you. Inko chuckled and saw Hisashi raised Izuku up with both of his hands, as if he held the Holy Grail. Where did those lights and sparkles come from above? Inko thought to herself with a confused expression before she decided to ignore it for now and moved her attention back to her two boys. Eventually, the parents shared a glance before they smiled at each other and watched their boy fall back to sleep after he touched Hisashi's snout more. For now, life was good for the Midoriya family. Age 1 Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo met in the Bakugo residence. At first, due to Katsuki's volatile and outright personality despite being a two-year-old baby, Mitsuki Bakugo thought that they would immediately start a fight, it could barely be called one as Katsuki would just be trying to pull on whatever his small hands could, as soon as Katsuki saw Izuku, as he did to other toddlers in the nursery. Fortunately though, the two toddlers connected with each other pretty easily, which made the two moms breathe out a sigh of relief. I honestly was fully prepared that Katsuki would be trying to bite your boy, Inko-chan, I had an entire kit and everything if he did try biting your son like he did to the other kids in the nursery. Mitsuki sighed, remembering the reason why she and her husband Masaru quickly gave up on having Katsuki in nurseries as she sat on the floor and watched Izuku and Katsuki interact with each other. Inko just chuckled and shook her head. I'm sure that your son wouldn't be that violent, Inko placed a hand on her best friend's shoulder. Tell that to the 32 parents that said otherwise. 
Mitsuki huffed before she quickly snapped a photo of Katsuki trying to climb on top of Izuku, the latter just letting the former do so. The sight was adorable as Katsuki ended up giving up pretty easily and just settled for laying next to Izuku who just made more cute noises. Inko shrugged. Well, you were pretty violent when we were young, maybe Katsuchan would become calmer when he grow grows up. She suggested. Mitsuki looked at Inko for a moment before she nodded. Yeah, I'm just hoping his biting habits would not last long. Mitsuki sighed, remembering her own mother's reminders about how many things she bit when she was young. Mitsuki really didn't expect that Katsuki would experience the same thing, at least she could tease him about it later on once her boy is grown up. Hopefully it won't. Inko nodded before she looked at Mitsuki. How's your models by the way? I heard one of them got into a relationship with another. Mitsuki blinked at Inko's question before she grinned. Ah, right, Kumiko-chan and Sumi-chan finally confessed to each other, and it only took them two years. Mitsuki nodded as Inko smiled. That's good to hear, I did think that those two becoming a couple had a very high chance of happening. Inko's expression turned from a happy one to an amused one. Mitsuki laughed. It was obvious that the two fell in love at first sight, it took me half a year to make them able to talk with each other before they finally stopped stuttering or just becoming a damn tomato at the sight of each other. The blonde added before she relaxed on the couch. Some of my co-workers owe me cash now. She snickered, remembering the bets between her workers and models. Inko just cited her best friend's habits on betting over the most random things to make a quick profit. Meanwhile, the two babies were now busy with their blocks. They were somehow working together, stacking one block on top of another. It took them a while to form two towers, but when Katsuki finally placed the last block on the second tower, they both giggled and clapped their hands. It didn't take Katsuki a moment to topple the tower and make their hard work collapse into a mess. Izuku just tilted his head before he looked at Katsuki. They stared at each other before. Boink! Izuku lightly slapped Bakugo with a cartoonish carrot plush. Boink! In return, Bakugo also slapped Izuku with his own celery plush. The two babies stared at each other before they narrowed their eyes. An agreement was made, they would together take over the world once they became big like their own mom and dad. For now, now they will resume with their playtime. Age 4 Okay, but when is my quirk coming? Katsuki did not pout when he asked Izuku that question. Izuku looked at his best friend with a frown before he sighed. Mom said that quirks come when we're four or six years old, and since we're already four, we just have to wait. Izuku repeated the same words he had been repeating for the past half hour to Katsuki. Katsuki huffed, he was never a patient person after all. Why can't my damn quirk already wake up, some of our classmates already got theirs, he grumbled before he tossed a pebble across the river, watched it skip before it stopped and sunk. Maybe your quirk factor is lazy. Izuku replied, copying Katsuki's action of stone skipping. Katsuki looked at Izuku and huffed. If mine is lazy, then I bet yours is lazier. Katsuki retorted. Nah, uh. A powerful response, enough to make all might stagger. Katsuki wore a deadpan expression. Izuku, you literally fall asleep everywhere if you stand still for more than five seconds. Izuko stopped tossing pebbles through the river to look at Katsuki and collect more. You don't have proof of that, Kaken. He childishly blew raspberries and watched Katsuki's expression turn from flat to irritated. Katsuki huffed and went back to skipping pebbles. Shut up. He muttered before he stood up and looked at the small pebble in his hands. With a sigh, Katsuki tossed the pebble with more force than usual. K.R. Boom. A small explosion popped and sent the pebble flying past the river. The sudden pop startled the two boys, especially Katsuki as the source of the explosion came from his hand. Ha, ha! Izuku looked at the frozen Katsuki with surprise. Katsuki looked gobsmacked before he looked at his own hands. W.O., Izuku, I think, this is my quirk? Katsuki said, his expression turned from surprise to glee as sparks began to pop in his hands. Izuku stood up and quickly went closer to Katsuki. 
Explosions? Izuku tilted his head, watching Katsuki pop more explosions with awe. I think so. Katsuki nodded before he clenched his fists and stopped creating more explosions. Awesome. They both muttered before they looked at each other. We gotta tell Auntie Mitsuki. Izuku stated before he noticed Katsuki was already running away and laughing as he waved his arms around and popped more explosions. Izuku sputtered in shock before he began to chase Katsuki. W-H, hey wait for me. He cried out. Katsuki repeated with a happy smile on his face, popping more explosions as he ran. Age 5. Today was Izuku's birthday. Like his past birthdays, only close family friends attended which is as expected, only the Bakugo family. They celebrated at the Midoriya household as always. Hey, Izuku, what do you think your quirk would be like? Katsuki asked and helped Izuku open the rest of his gifts. It was still a surprise to Katsuki that Izuku had a lot of aunts and uncles, which resulted in a total of almost 40 gifts per birthday. Izuku shrugged at Katsuki's question. I don't know, maybe it'll be something cool like dad or maybe something similar from mom. He replied. Eh, I bet your quirk will be strong, Uncle Hisashi's pretty strong, right? Katsuki huffed as he sat down on the floor. The two boys looked at Hisashi who was busy catching up with Masaru. Both men laughed at something, though Hisashi's laugh was more, booming, almost like the two boys' favorite hero, All Might. But then, then again, Hisashi did look like All Might if the latter had a dragon mutant quirk. Yeah, dad's pretty strong, I think he can lift a car easily. Izuku nodded with a smile. He didn't notice Inko quickly taking a photo nearby. Maybe he can, he's big like All Might, Katsuki mumbled. To him, All Might is still unbeatable and the strongest, but it doesn't mean anyone else can be like All Might. Katsuki paused and looked at Izuku with a puzzled expression. Hey, Izuku, why don't you want to be a hero? Katsuki asked. Izuku looked confused from Katsuki's question. Well, I don't know, I just never thought of becoming one. Izuku tilted his head. Katsuki pouted at his best friend's simple and in his own opinion stupid answer. Why? We can be a hero duo like that new duo, Water Hose, but better obviously. Katsuki sat up and crossed his arms. Izuku shrugged. Maybe, but I really don't wanna, sorry. He still rejected the idea, making Katsuki frown. Fine, the blonde then grabbed one of his All Might toys and looked at it for a moment. If you can't be my sidekick or teammate, you'll be my number one fan then. Katsuki offered, making Izuku smile. Yeah, I'll still be your best friend too, right Kaken? Izuku asked. Katsuki just nodded with a smirk on his face. Obviously, now wanna help me draw? Katsuki handed Izuku a black crayon. The black-haired boy nodded and placed down an All Might themed sketchbook for them to draw on. Sometime later, Katsuki paused as he noticed that something was off which made him stop drawing. He stared at Izuku. Hey, hey Izuku? What is it? Izuku stopped drawing to look at Katsuki with confusion. Katsuki pointed at Izuku's hair. Is it just me or is your hair floating and changing colors? He asked, his expression being confused and concerned. What do, do you may ah ah? Izuku's brain immediately stopped as soon as he saw his black hair beginning to float just like his friend said. His hair color began to invert as well, starting from the roots until it reached the tips. It began to curl, before it became swirls, as his hair began to billow gently, similar to fire. He didn't notice a smile growing on his face, a smile that was too wide for his face. FSSSSHHHHH Smoke began to seep out of the boy's back and shoulders before it transformed into rubber-like clouds that floated around his neck. His body seemed to gain thick, black outlines that made him stand out from the world. Izuku wanted to start laughing for no reason. Due to the Izuku being five years old, his immediate action was to call his parents. Am mom. Dad. Izuku immediately cried out, causing Inko and Hisashi to stop their chatting with Mitsuki and Masaru. Their expressions turned from fond and happy to serious and deadly respectively. 
My baby. What's wrong? Did you get hurt? Did you try O? Oh. Inko worriedly bombarded Izuku with questions before she stopped and noticed her son's hair. Hisashi followed and performed an award-winning slide to stop his momentum. What is it? The dragon man asked before he also noticed Izuku's hair. I, I think that's a quirk. Inko stated the obvious as Hisashi nodded, his face wearing an almost comical stunned expression. My boy's got his own quirk. Hisashi recovered from his stupor and quickly grabbed Izuku by the waist and hoisted him up while laughing. Congratulations! Mitsuki cheered with Masaru before she hummed, looking at Izuku with confusion. But what is his quirk exactly? It's not like Inko's weak pull or Hisashi's dragon quirk though? She tilted her head. That, you, you, make a good point. Hisashi nodded, looking puzzled as anyone else in the house. He then looked back at Izuku. Hey kiddo, you think you have any idea what your quirk is? He asked. Izuku tilted his head. I, I don't know, I do feel funny though, he replied as Hisashi gently put Izuku back on the floor before he closely inspected Izuku's transformed hair. Well, your new hairstyle does resemble fire, related to me being a dragon, I think, Hisashi lightly scratched the side of his head. And it's deafening gravity so that can be related to Inko's pull, he continued. Maybe try pulling something? Katsuki suggested while looking at his best friend with curiosity. Izuku nodded and looked at the dropped pencil on the floor before trying to pull it closer. The pencil didn't react, making Izuku pout. Doesn't work. He sighed. Inko tilted her head and kneeled next to Izuku, giving him gentle rubs behind his back. Don't worry Izuku, your quirk's still new so of course it wouldn't be noticeable at first, we can visit the doctor to see specifics about it. Inko said. Well, it's obvious that you two would be leaving for the hospital, we're gonna leave now if you wouldn't mind, Inko? Mitsuki nodded and got off from the couch as Inko nodded. Inko glanced at Mitsuki. Sure, do tell me the rest of our talk later on the phone though. Mitsuki just snickered at Inko's request. Tell me about what your quirk is later, okay? Katsuki requested. Izuku looked at Katsuki before nodding and waving as the Bakugo family left. Hisashi huffed before he carried Izuku up. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. Hisashi chuckled, watching Izuku's expression turn excited. Careful, honey, you might drop Izuku-in. Inko sighed and earned a nod from Hisashi. Later, at the Mandalow Hospital. The Midoriya family went through the necessary paperwork, waited for their turn for half an hour, and finally got inside their designated doctor's room. Good ap afternoon, Midoriya family. The doctor offered, taking a seat at a desk chair. Hisashi opted to just remain standing while Inko and Izuku sat on their own seats. Good afternoon, Dr. Uchiha. Inko and Izuku replied politely, though Izuku sounded more excited as expected. Please, just call me Sakura, it's been years ever since we first met, we might as well consider ourselves friends, no? Sakura chuckled as Inko and Hisashi nodded. Sakura was pretty much Izuku's doctor since birth. Now, I'm guessing that Lil Izuku Kuen here finally awakened his quirk? She leaned forward with a curious expression. Izuku nodded at the doctor's question. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is though. Sakura just smiled at Izuku's unsure response. Well kid, quirks are hardly what they seem to be, that's why we diagnose and test them. She chuckled. But moving on, Sakura changed her attention from Izuku to his parents. Mr. Midoriya's quirk is dragon, right? Hisashi nodded at Sakura's question. Yep, it gave me a dragon appearance and form, kind of wish I could look normal like my little sister Ryuko, he muttered, remembering the difference between his quirk and Ryuko's own. Hisashi still felt a bit jealous of Ryuko being able to keep her human appearance while he's stuck between a humanoid dragon or a gigantic full dragon. Izuku blinked, remembering his dad's full dragon form that was showcased on his fourth birthday last year. It was easily three times bigger than Auntie Ryuko's own dragon form. And Mrs. Midoriya is weak pull? 
Sakura continued. Inko nodded and brought over a pencil with telekinesis. It's actually just pull but since I barely trained it, it never became capable of pulling anything else besides small objects. Inko added. Her quirk could have been easily one of the most strongest quirks out there if she had trained it. But then, then again, arteries, eyes, nails, teeth, and more are considered small objects. Inko Midoriya is a dangerous person, none dared provoking her. So, we can expect that Izuku here would either have a mutation of both quirks, or have one of yours passed on in some form. Sakura nodded before taking a look at Izuku's strange hair and noting it down in a notepad. Which generation in your own families do you two belong to? Sakura asked, glancing at Inko and Hisashi. Fourth. Inko answered. Sixth. Hisashi answered before he gently ruffled Izuku's hair and widened his eyes in surprise. Izuku's hair felt a lot softer than it was, it was like touching clouds. Does Izuku Kuen have two toe joints? Yes, we checked it from Dr. Tsubasa. Inko nodded. Sakura's happy expression turned sour, she almost looked offended from just hearing the other doctor's name. That quack, Ujiko Tsubasa? Ugh, you shouldn't trust him, he easily judges if kids have quirks or not by that outdated study of quirk factors being involved over the amount of toe joints a child has. She grumbled. I insist that you two stop visiting that man, I can't even be sure if he really has a medical license. Sakura continued before she sighed and regained her composure. Told you so. Hisashi whispered to Inko who just sighed and nodded. Moving on, Sakura sighed. What do you feel right now, Izuku? She asked, now changing her attention back to Izuku. Izuku shrugged at the doctor's question. Weird? I also feel light though, and my heart, it also sounds funny. He responded, unsure. Sakura nodded and moved closer before she used a stethoscope to hear Izuku's heartbeat. Doom dot da day. Doom dot da da. Doom dot da day. Doom dot da day. Doom, doom dot da day. Well, it is strange, it almost, no, it does sound like a musical rhythm, definitely strange. Sakura mumbled. Hisashi tilted his head in confusion. Strange? He muttered with concern, his enhanced hearing letting him hear the doctor's quiet mumbling. Sakura nodded. Yes, Izukukuin's heart beat a lot louder than normal too, almost sounding like drums. It's beating to a certain rhythm too, does it feel bad to you, Izukukuin? Izuku shook his head at Sakura's question. No, I feel great, actually. He mumbled, glancing at his own chest. I'm guessing that my boy's got the heart of a dragon. Hisashi chuckled and crossed his arms. Sakura hummed. It's stronger than yours, actually, Mr. Midoriya. She shook her head. It seems that Izuku-kun's quirk here is much more complex than yours. Sakura sighed and stopped listening to Izuku's heartbeat. It could take an entire day, or possibly a month with many appointments to figure out what his quirk really is, as it can't be a simple evolution of either you or Mrs. Midoriya's quirk. She added. Is there any other option that wouldn't take that long, doctor? Inko asked and gently held Izuku's hand as the boy curiously played with his hair. Sakura hummed at Inko's question as she sat back down on her chair. Well, there I do know a guy who can help. He's just extremely pricey about it but then again his quirk gives a full explanation and proper name of what someone's quirk is. Hisashi tilted his head while Inko raised a brow. How pricey are we talking? He asked. A hundred thousand. The doctor answered. Inko's expression took on a comical one as she gasped at the price. TT that's half a grand. She exclaimed. Deal, deal. Hisashi didn't even hesitate for a second as he looked at Inko's shocked expression with amusement. What? You know well that I run a massive company back in America. He chuckled. All right, I just forgot. Inko nodded with an embarrassed expression. 
She never was able to normalize the fact that Hisashi, and herself by extension, is rich enough to throw money out like it's worthless paper, even after ten years since they first married. All right, I'll make a quick call then. Sakura nodded and turned around to pick up her phone from the table. The two parents nodded before they directed their attention back to Izuku. Hey champ, what do you say about getting some ice cream after we're done here? Hisashi offered. Yes please. Izuku nodded eagerly with a bright smile. It took Inko everything not to squeal after seeing her adorable boy smile which somehow looked a lot more bright than usual. After around half an hour, a knock was heard on the door. Oh, that must be him, come in. Sakura quickly got off her chair. The Midoriya family watched as a short, portly man that they can only assume as a doctor due to him wearing a coat entered the room. Good afternoon. The man nodded. Now who's the youngin that I'm gonna be using my quirk on? He asked, before noticing Izuku who waved. That one, I assume? Sakura nodded at the man's question. Right then, I'm Dr. Herolik and my quirk is called Observe. It lets me observe objects or people and be given an explanation or a record of what they are along with a predetermined name. Herolik explained before he grabbed a sheet of paper and a pen from the table. Izuku tilted his head and showed curiosity. Predetermined names? Izuku inquired. Herolik glanced at Izuku before he nodded. Yes, it's not a well-known fact that quirks actually come with predetermined names, nobody just realized it since most quirks are non-sentient. With my quirk, I was able to know what the supposed name of the quirk should be, though I wouldn't stop anyone from renaming their own to whatever they want. Hiralek nodded again after he finished his explanation. Hiralek then held his hand out. I'll need you to hold my hand for my quirk to take effect. He instructed. Izuku looked at Hisashi and Inko with worry, but the couple just nodded and smiled at him encouragingly. Twing. Fascinating. Hiralik muttered as soon as his quirk activated the moment Izuku held his hand. The only way that the other three adults in the room noticed that the short doctor's quirk activated is by the way his eyes shined brightly. Well. Inko tilted her head as she waited for Hiralik's results. Hiralik raised a hand. Give me a moment, this child's quirk is, let's say very amazing. He requested before letting Izuku go, then he got on a chair and began to write on the paper. Here, Izuku Kuwan. Sakura sighed as she offered a lollipop to Izuku who happily took it. Dr. Hiralik might look strange, but his quirk is accurate, so don't have any doubts about it. She vouched. Inko and Hisashi shared a look with each other before they nodded. Hisashi chuckled before gently patting Izuku's head. Hear that, kiddo? Doc said your quirk's amazing. Why yeah, I can't wait to show it to Kakin. Izuku nodded. His hands were already waving around as an outlet to his excitement. Despite not wanting to be a hero, Izuku is also a child, and like any child of his age, he is very excited about what exactly his quirk is. There, I'm done. Hiralik nodded and set the pen down after writing all of the contents that his quirk provided. I'll be off then, Dr. Uchiha, I expect the payment will be sent later. He huffed and got off the seat. The old doctor gave Izuku a friendly pat on the shoulder before leaving through the door. Sakura rolled her eyes at the other doctor's attitude before she sighed and grabbed the paper from the table, all right, let's see, she mumbled before her eyes widened. Oh. Inko, Inko and Hisashi immediately looked worried at the sight of Sakura's glasses comically gaining some cracks. I is there something w wrong? Inko asked. Sakura repeatedly looked at the paper and back to Izuku several times before she repositioned her glasses back to place. There, isn't, in fact this is, outright amazing, maybe even considered, ridiculous. I suggest just looking at the paper yourself. Sakura wiped off a bead of sweat from her temple as she handed the paper to Inko who then handed it to Hisashi. Hold on, where's my glasses, Hisashi muttered as he looked at his pockets. I have it, hun. Ah, thank you, dear. Hisashi blinked in surprise before he took the glasses from Inko's hands and wore them. All right, let's see, Hisashi hummed as he began to read the paper. 
Old butterscotch pie. Like how Sakura reacted earlier, Hisashi froze. Inko looked at her frozen husband with a flat stare before she took the paper and read it for herself. Okay, what is it that's making you two free o? Eventually, the two recovered from their stupor as they both looked at each other and then to Azuku. Yep, ridiculous all right. Hisashi nodded before giving Izuku the paper. I guess our boy really is special, right Inko? He chuckled and made sure that his wife wouldn't faint. Inko just slowly nodded, having a lot of thoughts in her mind over Izuku's quirk. Izuku looked at the paper, only for his eyes to widen in surprise. Quirk true name, freedom. Type, type, transformation. Description, freedom lets the user enter a state that lets them manipulate reality or bypass physical laws of nature in order to achieve impossible feats. The quirk grants absolute freedom to do whatever he likes, making him the freest kid, and later man, in the world, and quite possibly also the strongest. The user gains a completely rubbery body, this effect stays even outside the transformed state but it would be very limited and would not allow the user to manipulate their surroundings as their transformed state could do. He will be invulnerable to blunt force, but vulnerable to sharp objects. Transformation condition, the user has to force their heart to beat in a specific rhythm. The rhythm is only naturally known and explainable to the user himself. If the user is in a death state, they can easily make their heart start beating again, and if they do, they get brought back to their peak condition, but once they return to their base state, they would rapidly age for an hour before fully returning back to normal, never mention this to anyone, rip and do not include this piece of info on the official paper and logs, I will call a colleague of mine to wipe this entire kiddo's quirk info later for safety purposes. I'm sure Midoriya Hisashi knows who would be eagerly looking for the boy if his quirk's true description is revealed. Drawbacks The user is invincible to any damage during the transformed state, but if he gets exhausted enough the quirk will forcefully deactivate the transformed state. The user is still vulnerable to sharp objects outside of their transformed state. The user is, or will likely become, easily bored, it is suggested to give him something he can use to distract himself. Example, Rubik's Cube Side Effects, Cosmetic Slash Mutations he wouldn't be able to show muscle growth and would remain thin or scrawny when he grows up. Could have been added as a weakness slash drawback if the muscle density slash strength doesn't apply, but it does, just not visually. Possible slash unconfirmed mutation, Izuku Midoriya would receive Hisashi Midoriya's height despite not receiving, receiving any mutations that could be considered dragon-like. The user's body is completely made out of rubber, from cells to organs, basically everything, he exerts a lot of energy just from breathing or walking. He will become a very heavy eater due to the fact he will need to burn through a lot of calories. The user, or the what's around the user, would produce cosmetic and comedic effects on things he interacts with during their transformed state. Doctors note, this kid's quirk is a ridiculous and outright impossible level of evolution from Inko Midoriya's weak pull quirk, as Izuko Midoriya is essentially using an absurd form of unexplainable kinesis on reality and his own self. The reason for this absurd level of evolution could be due to Azuku Midoriya's quirk factor being simply that strong to trigger an awakening from Inko Midoriya's pull quirk. TLDR, quirks are weird. The boy's quirk is part of the unexplainable group, I myself hardly believe my theory of why his quirk became like this. And give the kid a constant use license. His body is permanently cartoony, like rubber. Freedom. Izuku muttered the name of his quirk. He looked stunned yet amazed. He never really thought that his quirk would be this, cool. Just like a true dragon, my boy's free as the skies. Hisashi laughed and quickly grabbed Izuku and carried him up. Izuku yelped at Hisashi's sudden move before he began to laugh as well. While the two boys were busy laughing and celebrating, Inko just smiled. Sakura also smiled. Just happy for Izuku as she already saw him as her honorary niece for how many times he visited her in the hospital if he ever walks by. Oh dear, I could already tell how much harder taking care of Izuku will be, Inko sighed, wiping off some sweat from her face. Sakura chuckled at Inko's words. I can already tell how much of a ruckus he would bring with that quirk of his, she nodded and watched Inko's expression turn into a weary one. Don't remind me. Inko Hoften just opted to continue watching her husband and son play around happily. 
age 14, present time. Yo, Izuku. Good morning, Kaken. Izuku and Katsuki were still best friends as they were since they were babies, though they both know that they are practically brothers in all but blood. Can you tell that the hag wants Auntie Inko over at the house later again? Katsuki requested as he joined Izuku and walked next to him. His scowl and resting bitch expression were present as expected. Katsuki grew up to be a confident delinquent who isn't afraid of popping some explosions here and there to the occasional asshole that tries messing with them both. He got into a lot of fights, though all of it was instigated by the other persons, but he never started one, somehow. Don't call Auntie Mitsuki a hag, and sure, I'll tell mom about it. Izuku pouted but he nodded at Katsuki's request. Izuku became more confident like Katsuki, though he became a lot more nonchalant and playful than violent compared to the latter. His quirk is a cheat after all, granting him the freedom to do anything he wishes. He also became very tall and lanky as Dr. Hiralek said when his quirk got diagnosed, as he now stood at 7 feet 2 inches feet. No, fuck off beanpole. Katsuki scoffed. We still heading to the arcade after school? He asked before kicking a pebble forward. Izuku shrugged. Well, we don't have anything else to do later. I've got my chores done and dad's not calling till Friday as usual so nothing's on my schedule, how about yours? Katsuki shook his head. Same thing, got all of the old hags list done and my assignments all ready for next week. He sighed and kicked the same pebble forward before he glanced at Izuku. What's up? Izuku asked after he noticed Katsuki's stare. Why re why re you wearing that shit? The straight jacket? Izuku asked, which earned him a nod from Katsuki. Yeah, what's up with that? I never asked about it so I thought now's a good time to do so. Katsuki said. Izuku hummed as the grin appeared on his face. No reason, I just like wearing one. He chuckled. Katsuki blanched. It makes people think you're some psycho or someone that escaped from a mental hospital. He retorted. To be fair, with the more or less deranged smile that seemed to never disappear on Izuku's face, he did look like one. Can't deny the first one. Izuku snickered. And relax, like I said, it's my own choice to wear this, it wasn't suggested by anyone. It's for fashion, dude. He then sighed. Besides, I have my hands free, no locks on M or anything. Izuku played jazz hands just to emphasize his point. You have a shit sense of fashion then. Fuck you. Izuku huffed. I ain't gay. Izuku snorted. Yes you are, you're literally crushing on Kirishima from the other classroom. No the fuck I don't? Katsuki hissed while looking flustered, just proving Izuku's accusation. Ha! Huh. Yes you do. Izuku laughed. I hate you. Katsuki looked miserable while Izuku continued laughing. Love you too bro. Izuku just chuckled before he finally stopped and resumed walking. Izuku and Katsuki eventually reached their destination, their school, Aldera Middle School. The school, it can be called well-lived, but really it's just old and both boys, along with other students and even the staff there, had bets over how many more years can the school last before it finally gives out and gets replaced. The railings in the rooftop are old, some are already broken, the tilings of the floor are decorated with cracks, the windows are always left open due to the fact the classrooms barely had any functioning air conditioning, and nobody, absolutely nobody dared enter the bathrooms. Every student and staff unanimously agreed that they'd rather do their business in either the cafes, restaurants, or public restrooms nearby. It's a real question on how this shitty school is still standing, really. Thank fuck we only need to stay here for just one more year, Katsuki grumbled with Izuku nodding in agreement as they both walked past the gates and into the school's doors. Izuku rolled his eyes. It's literally the first day and you're already itching to fuck off Alria, Izuku was interrupted as his and Katsuki's ears were filled with mixed noises. Mostly footsteps and voices chatting with another. Fucking noisy. Katsuki immediately scoffed as he continued walking, not bothering if he nudged past someone's shoulder. The black-haired boy just shook his head and followed Katsuki to their designated classroom. 
As always ever since they first enrolled in Eldora Middle School two years ago, they always were in the same classroom. Some immediately noticed the two boys entering, but their focus was mainly on Izuku. Nobody does expect a tall, lanky teenager wearing a straitjacket to just waltz into a classroom after all, at least those that were fortunate enough to not be Izuku's classmates during the past years. It was a real question why Izuku was allowed to wear his straitjacket when he's supposed to wear their middle school uniform like anyone did. He may or may not have blackmail on the principal. Izuku merely looked amused from the obvious attention and took an empty seat on the edge of the classroom. Katsuki took the seat that was next to Izuku. Five new people in this shitty school. The explosive boy noted as he scanned the classroom. It took a bit more time for the rest of their classmates for this year to come before the teacher finally entered. How would you know who are the new ones? Thought you didn't care about the extras in this school? Izuku raised a brow. Shut, shut up. Good morning, class. I am Isetsuno and I am your homeroom teacher for this year, their teacher began, though Izuku and Katsuki immediately began to doze off. After a while, Katsuki quickly got back from his dozing as soon as he heard his name be called. Fuck, what? He mumbled, looking around in confusion as the teacher sighed. It's your turn to introduce yourself. Name, age, quirk. The teacher instructed. Katsuki nodded and stood up. Tisk, Katsuki Bakugo, 14, my quirk is explosion. Small sparks popped from Katsuki's palms as a showcase before he sat back to his seat. Next is, Midoriya. Setsuno read as the mentioned boy just waved. Izuku Midoriya, 15, my quirk is freedom. The odd name of the quirk made the transferees curious, while the rest of the classmates, except Katsuki, sighed and appeared miserable. One of those transferees tilted his head in confusion. Freedom? What kind of name for a quirk is that? He asked, looking fairly confused. Figure it out yourself. Izuku just snickered in response. Katsuki rolled his eyes, knowing well that it was impossible to figure out what the hell Izuku's quirk is without being given a full explanation from himself. Do that later, Setsuno huffed before he continued. Now, for the last five on the list, Heizono. A girl stood up from her seat. Izuku hummed as he inspected the girl's appearance. She has long, wavy, white hair, which is mostly tied into a ponytail, leaving two locks on the sides of her face, and bangs that obscures most of the right eye of her face. Her eyes are sharp, containing jet black pupils. Just because of the girl's weirdly styled white hair, Izuku immediately took a liking to her. Kanako Heizono, 14, my quirk is dust. Kanako demonstrated her quirk by creating ash-like dust from her palm before reabsorbing it. She then huffed before she sat back on her chair. Next, Sutsumi. A girl, girl with long, indigo-colored hair with numerous scattered pink streaks, tied in a ponytail with two full shoulder-length strands of hair framing her face stood up from her seat. Kana Tsutsumi, 15, my quirk is rifle. Kana momentarily protruded a rifle gun from her right elbow before retracting it and sitting down. Next, the rest of the transferees introduced themselves, though Izuku didn't bother with remembering their names. He could always learn them later when he needs to. Setsuno nodded. Now, since today's your first day at school, I'll let you all socialize with each other first. Tomorrow, we'll start the orientation. With that, he sat on his own chair and opened a book to read. Chatter amongst the classroom immediately began as the students talked with each other. Katsuki looked irritated. So we're just gonna waste time then, I could be training my quirk right now, he muttered. Izuku just chuckled and lightly poked Katsuki's cheek. Don't be a sourpuss, Kakin, Auntie Mitsuki did say you should make friends, you know? Why not do it now? Izuku tilted his head. I ain't making any friends here. Katsuki scowled. I'm not gonna see any of these extras after this year, I'm heading to another high school, then UA is my university after all. He added. You underestimate people too much. Izuku hummed as he leaned back on his chair. Katsuki paused at his best friend's words before he shook his head. 
I don't underestimate people, if I do something, it's all or nothing. I just know that nobody in this class can actually match up to me. The blonde replied. Izuku glanced at Katsuki for a moment before he pouted. I could flatten you like a pancake, I mean that literally. Fuck off your quirks bullshit. Kab kaboom! Izuku launched a spinning kick towards Katsuki's midsection, but the latter sidestepped, narrowly avoiding the strike. With a savage grin, Katsuki retaliated with a heavy punch. As his fist connected with the air, an explosion erupted from his palm, heard throughout the forest. Why am I the one sparring with you again? Izuku ducked under the blast, his body contorting before he countered with a series of quick jabs and kicks, his limbs stretching with each strike to reach Katsuki. Because you're the only fucker around here that can match up against me. Katsuki huffed as he blocked and parried, his natural instincts guiding his defense. Another explosive punch was aimed at Izuku, who cartwheeled backward to evade the burst of explosion. With a sudden burst of speed, Izuku closed in, his leg extending like a whip. Katsuki barely had time to react, stumbling back from the impact. Fuck! He gasped out before quickly recovering. Boom! Izuku followed his previous kick by spinning low and sweeping his leg in a wide arc. Katsuki jumped, narrowly avoiding the leg sweep. Landing with a thud, Katsuki thrusted both of his palms forward and erupted an explosion. Izuku was sent back against a tree from the impact, but before Katsuki could react, Izuku used his rubbery properties and rebounded with blinding speeds. Izuku propelled himself forward, his body twisting midair before his foot connected with Katsuki's chest. Katsuki spat out saliva as he staggered backward from the impact. God I fucking hate your rubber bullshit. He grumbled before letting himself fall on the ground. Izuku huffed, taking deep breaths as he sat on the ground. I did suggest that we fight without quirks this round. Fuck off. Katsuki rolled his eyes before sighing. After a bit, Izuku got up from the ground. Wanna get some drinks? He offered. Katsuki glanced at Izuku before nodding and also getting up. The two boys began to walk through the forest. We serious, seriously gotta change the location on where we spar. Izuku said. Katsuki raised a brow. What's wrong with using a forest to spar? He asked. Izuku adopted a blank expression. First of all, your explosions can set the entire fucking forest in fire. Fair. And pretty sure we're slowly shaving that forest bald with each fight causing collateral damage. Izuku pointed at the fallen trees on their path. Katsuki slowly nodded. Fine, we'll get a new place, but where? I'll try looking up some empty places where people wouldn't see us using our quirks. Izuku nodded as they finally exited the forest, possibly for the last time. Get me a coke. K, Izuku nodded as he looked at the vending machine. Got any ideas where the new spot would be? Katsuki asked, kicking a rock away. Izuku shook his head and caught the can of coke that the machine had dispensed. Not yet, still thinking. Think faster then. Katsuki scoffed as he took the can from Izuku and cracked it open. Why don't you think for once? Maybe that'll finally fill your head with actual thoughts besides explosions, killing, and training? Izuku snarked. Beanpole. Katsuki growled, crushing the empty can after finishing it. Pomerani and Kuan. Izuku grinned mockingly. Boom. Before the two can truly begin bickering, they both got startled after they heard a loud explosion erupt nearby. Izuku looked at Katsuki. That wasn't from you, right? He asked, receiving a nod from the latter. Obviously. The blonde hissed. A villain at a, before Katsuki could even talk further, Izuku was already running towards the source of the noise, noise. God damn it. Katsuki sighed before chasing after Izuku. The source of the explosion was nearby, if the massive trails of smoke they saw was a sign. The two ran past buildings and stores as they reached the source, only to see a massive crowd blocking their way. What the hell is happening? Katsuki asked, 
scowling as he tried looking past the crowd. Since Azuku was very tall, he managed to look past the crowd to see the situation. Uh, some big, very big booger with eyes is holding three people hostage. Izuku described the situation for Katsuki. What? Katsuki looked bewildered. Oh, slime, not booger, it's SL, no, sludge? Yeah, sludge. Thank you all for watching this video if you want more hit the like button for more and check the link for the fanfic below and goodbye.